Welcome, everyone, to this week's new episode of Project Tech Gaming. If you're new to the show, this is a show about tech, games, and everything in between. I'm joined by my co-host, Kelvin. How are you doing today, man? What's going on, everyone? How are you? So, Kelv, uh, want to tell me what's what's going on with this week? Anything new with you? Well, let's see. I just got out of work not too long ago, and it was it wasn't too bad. You're not going to tell people that you just became an uncle, like literally oh, hours ago. I, mean, I, I, I was I was <laughs> leading up to that, but I mean, if you want to just go balls deep, that's great. Yeah, I am officially an uncle now, so um, you can count Max as you know as my um, nephew. But this is like blood related for the first time, so this is actually pretty exciting. So yes, I am an uncle. All right. Well, uh, congrats, Keishla. Uh, shout out to you. Yes. And what is her shout son's name? What is your nephew's name? Uh, Kalen. His name is Kalen. 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 Mm-hmm. That's cool. I like that. Not Caleb. Kalen with a K. Kalen. All right. Interesting. Well, uh, yeah. happy born day to Kalen. And uh, that's yeah, awesome, yeah. dude. But yeah, uh, so, this, so I was actually um, awake at three o'clock in the morning because my um, my son decided to wake up at three o'clock in the morning. He is he's also sick. He has some congestions and all mm-hmm. that good stuff. So oh, um, I was awake at three, and then work was semi busy, not crazy, but I I couldn't function. I had like three coffees, and here we are doing a podcast. So let's 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 do this. All right. Well, we're gonna go ahead and and talk about today's topics. Topic one is everything that apple announced during yesterday's big loaded uh, uh loaded spring event um topic two the time demos for resident evil village are a terrible pr strategy topic three ps3 and vita store stores live as sony reverses closure upon backlash topic four ps5 is now the fastest selling console in u.s history topic hey. five microsoft no longer in talks of purchasing discord but before we get to the topics kelv uh we have this segment called game of the week uh, the co-host picks a game that they play um or a game they have played and basically give their impressions on it kelv what did uh you play this week i played near automata and that game let me tell you is it autonoma is or automatica automata 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 okay yeah um so Automata? Automata. Yeah, I think we're, it's we're gonna have to, wrong we're gonna check that. Thing, yeah. <laughs> Did you spell it right? No, I think it's spelled wrong. It's uh it's A U T O M A T A, I I believe. Regardless, um, you paid near Autonoma. And it's made by um Square Enix or Platinum Games developed it. It's it came out in 2017. It's February of 2017 so it, it's a couple years old but I, I did play the um the special edition one if you want to call it that and it was um i think it was re- re-released again in 2018 um i played it on game pass of course because that's okay. the hot topic thing of of every 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 Dude, episode i tell to... so many people on a daily basis like yeah get game pass yeah get it's game... pretty it's it's pretty great, but yeah, I played near, and I think this was a game that I should have played years ago because I would have loved it then as much as I love it right now. Mm-hmm. Um, so basically, I can't really tell you what the story is about. I, I played about 30, 45 minutes of it, um, but it, it was exciting and delightful nonetheless when I was playing that game. I think it has a lot of that. So I, I kind of wanted to keep in that same atmosphere with you playing Devil May Cry last year, oh, last year, last week for Game of the Week. So I kind of want to keep it in that same realm. You know, you wanted action, like an action adventure fast game. Fast paced action yeah. game. So, so I played Nier and it was very impressive. Um, I think one of my one of, one of the things that I took from that game playing for those, you know, 45 minutes or so is how 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 engaging that game is as you're playing and as you're going through each level. Um, it doesn't it does it doesn't stay uh, con- it doesn't stay constant in in one spot. So what I what I mean by that is you start off with you're you're in, in a mech and you're shooting kind of like Star Fox style, 64, mm-hmm. and you're just kind of shooting shooting some bad guys and stuff, and then it instantly cha- changes you to, you know, being 2B, which is the main character of the game, the main um, um, person, and then she is, um, you start off just fighting some guys, and then it, it, it kind of transitions you over to like a 2D style, like, yeah. Um, so it does a lot of that. It does it, it, like it a side scroller, moving. right? Like almost. a side scroller, yeah, exactly. So really it cool. keeps you like just bam, bam, bam. Like all right, you're gonna go 3D, bam. You're gonna go 2D, bam. You're gonna do um, this like like kind of like Star Fox kind of like action shooting style stuff. So it it keeps you like 
really engaged. Um, so 2B is the main character of the game, and there's another main character by the name of 9S, I want to say his name That's is. That's the dude, right? The, the That's guy. the dude. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And it, it plays, the game plays really kind of like, De- um, a little bit like Devil May Cry, but more so like Bayonetta, in my opinion. Um, it has a lot of that, that flashy style of like action, mm-hmm. um, and you're, you're kind of like doing some cool moves, and your LB, your left bumper, is your shooting mechanic. You have like a little robot that kind of follows you everywhere. Yeah. And... and- you kind of hold that to like continue shooting and then you press RB to like slice and dice and all that stuff. And then at the same time, you're trying to like, it's, it's, it's kind of like a lot, a lot to like deal with at the same time. But once you kind of get into the rhythm of it, you're, you're like, you're, you're, yeah, you you're, get, you're golden. Used to it. Yeah. Cool. Um, I, I did watch you play the game of the week video and, and I played this game too. Uh, yeah. when it first came out, I never beat it. I bought it for you. Yeah. You bought it for me for, yeah. for a Christmas present. And I never beat it. I definitely have to go back to it. But I liked how, like, that game, you just jump right in. There's no, yeah. like, it's just, like, action play. That's what I mean. I mean, again, you start off in a mech. and You're shooting things. You don't know what's going on. But the way it kind of delivers the action and de- delivers mm-hmm. the story, you're you're never, like, in a dull moment in that game. And I think that's what really keeps you in that same pace. And you're, you're just enjoying it yeah. the whole entire time. And then you fight a first boss within the first, like... 20 minutes of the game and the boss that you see at the uh, in the game of the week is like the first major boss that you play and again everything is hitting perfectly you got your story that's like all right cool i'm finding this huge mech you have the music going on in the background which is this epic like you know like ha, 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 like that, that kind of like god of war style yeah, like, yeah, music yeah. in the background mm-hmm, you know what mm-hmm. i mean and then um you have like your cool fighting styles like everything is just hitting like all the high notes, all the good notes for like, yeah, this is this is dope, this is epic, and yeah, it just comes together into like this great action game. Like, I can't say anything bad about it at the moment, and I'm actually I want to. You want to go more, back so and play? I yeah, go I'm gonna pick play, it up. So I'm definitely gonna do it. And it's on Game Pass. I mean, I have it for PS PS4, so I'll probably pop it into my PS5 and and, and start picking it up and play where I where I left off. Um, yeah, but yeah, I Another- definitely a fun game for sure. Yeah, another reason why I actually picked it up is because um, the new uh, remake or, or remaster Replicant, of Replicant? N- Near Replicant is coming out soon. I think this month, if I'm not mistaken. And so I, I kind of wanted to dive into that kind of atmosphere. Mm-hmm. And apparently this game has like a really s- deep and dark sorrow story to it, which I, yep. I'm always a sucker for. So I, I want to see more of the story and see what you know what, what it's all about. There, there's a huge following for near games. For Honestly, sure. I didn't, oh, yeah. re- I didn't realize, but they do like the the orchestras and stuff like that yeah. for for the soundtrack. Um, and again, it's it's just Square Enix. There, they just know how to do, yeah, uh, great you know RPG uh, elements to these type of games and stuff like that. Like they they really know how to flesh out characters and stories and stuff like oh, yeah. that. So yeah, I'm it, excited. It, and I, it, go ahead, sorry. I was gonna say, does it feel like a Square Enix game when you play it? Or does it yeah. feel like a different yeah. game? Yeah. It, it feels like a your typical like anime uh, Square Enix game where you're like mm-hmm. everything's over the top. You know, you're like you're you're running around, people are screaming left and right, and then you know, you, you just have like your big like set piece moments and it's a definitely a Square Enix game. S- Square Enix has a lot of like different variety in games. Like you have your Tomb Raiders, then you have like your near, like they're they're completely different games, you know. Yeah. But, but you you know when a Square Enix game is a Square Enix game, you know, like you know, it's just it's just there. Like it's also a platinum game. So think of a platinum game too, you know. So Vanquish is a good one that you think about too. Um it has a lot of that action fast paced action game style. So it, it definitely reminds me of like Vanquish as well. Awesome. You know what it it, it kind of reminds me of? Actually I think I saw something in this uh about near is they had like a a dragon guard reference yes in one of yep. the games i forget I've which game it was but i read about it and i dragon guard was one of my like, favorite games on ps2 it, it wasn't a good game by any means like i wasn't a great game but <laughs> it, it baffles I, it, me that this game has any relation to that to to dragon guard yeah like story-wise Please, like story-wise, story-wise it does yeah it's weird but uh that that's a topic for another day it's dragon guard um yeah so would you give this game a thumbs up yeah, I definitely give it a thumbs up. Like, I mean, you can see uh, one, one or know. two, one or two. Um, I mean, I'll give it a one right now because I, right I mean, now, I'm only you, played. Yeah, keep going. I haven't, okay. I haven't gotten really too deep into the game, but I can't imagine it being, um, 
you know, I can imagine it, me me giving it two thumbs up at some point because if it, if it continues through, if, if the beats continue through the whole entire game like the way yeah. it did in the first 40 minutes, then yeah, definitely. Cool. Um, any any closing thoughts before we move on about uh, Nier? Uh, no, just uh, check it out if you want something kind of similar to Devil May Cry, uh, Bayonetta, Vanquish, anything of that atmosphere. And it's it's a fun action game. It's, you know, you'll have a great time. I mean, again, I played it for a few minutes and it, I, I'm i hooked. Um, so check out Game of the Week for this week. Um, I played it for a little bit and give it a like, subscribe, you know, do all that, all that good stuff, all that jazz. We will put the link in the description uh, below for Game of the Week. Um, and go get it. It's free on Game Pass. So... <laughs> For sure. Uh, yeah. So moving on to the first topic, this is a hefty topic. Apple had a conference yesterday, and they unloaded a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to sure. a little bit of a tangent here. So Apple unveiled new products during during the event, which included new iMacs, new iPad Pros, Apple 4K TV, AirTags, and a purple iPhone 12 and 12 Mini. All right, so let's start with the iMac, Kelv. Mm-hmm. So yeah. the iMac now has, uh, it's redesigned, so it's a lot slimmer now, and okay. it is powered by Apple's M1 chip. It is available now um, in gray, blue, purple, pink, orange, yellow, and green. Mm. It is 24-inch with a 4.5K retina display, which is weird, 45 Four and a half, not four, right? just four and a half. They, yeah, just, which they is had to strange. bump it up just a little bit more because it's Apple, right? Um, they finally have a 1080p webcam and studio quality three uh, three microphone array in a Mac because for whatever reason Macs just refuse to put 1080 webcams in their computers yeah. <laughs> for however long. Um, and the new Magic Keyboard that comes with the iMac has the Touch ID like the new um, MacBooks mm-hmm. do. The MacBooks, yep. Yeah. Um, it's a seven-core GPU, um, eight gigs of RAM with 256 uh, gigabytes of, of, of memory or of, of, uh, storage space. Yep. The starting price is at $12.99. So. As usual, ap- pretty hefty, hefty price there. What do you think of it? Um, first the- glance, I'm not crazy about the colors i think it looks kind of like a toy in my opinion it's it, well here's the thing it's like a throwback to the old max like the yeah. the g3 so there i think it's yeah. a call back to then i i'm it's weird that they're going really with the spring colors yeah and, with, and that's what i mean by like the toy looking kind of colors i feel like it it there's something off about it for me and i'm not quite sure what it is and i'm and i'm, and I'm just kind of like pointing at the colors at this point because I, I don't know what it is but the design is it, it, i mean don't get me wrong it's a beast in itself but I, I feel like there's something weird about the design like i, I kind of i prefer the 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 um the older max like the really? last gen max just because of like how sleek and stylish it looks. I, I, i'm more of like a a sleek design type but of, they um, had that that hump in the back whereas these are just like a straight the, like sure. panel yeah, you know? I'm talking more of like a, like a quality, like the design type, like like just how like for PS5, for example, if you look at it, it has like that sleek design, and, I, and that's kind of like where I like about like you know the design that that's going for. PS3, another sleek design. This one just kind of feels like I don't know. It, it, Does it look it, like a toy to you because the colors? Sort of. I think the to- I think the colors are, are are messing with my brain to be honest. So I think I mean, it I'm is sure- too. If, like if you sure saw this I in black, it. if you saw yeah. this in black or something, exactly. you'd be like, "Oh!" But it's because those Easter colors are kind of throwing you off. That it's like they're kind of throwing me off. The spring colors are off. But again, if I get you know hands on with it and I kind of actually ex- you know experience it to my, myself, I feel like I'd have a different impression. But just the first you know twenty four hours of this, I feel like I'm like, all right, it looks it looks okay, it looks cool. Um, but uh, I don't know. What do you think? Um, I think the, the design is cool. I think they did a good job of making it super slim now. Um, I just don't see, like, I think people are more shying away more from desktops unless you're, like, a PC gamer. You know what I mean? I feel like people are more leaning towards laptops mm-hmm. for things to do. For, right? for a long time, for a while now, right? Yeah. Um, and, again, people are going to start staying they're not going to be at home as much because of COVID is kind of like 
it's being treated better now. You know what I mean? So like people aren't going to be in front of their desk as often as we were before. Yeah. Right. So I feel like the iMac will always have a place, but is there going to be a ton of people buying these things? Maybe, maybe they did the colors because you're like, I don't want a boring looking desktop computer. I want something that's fun to look at, you know? Sure. Yeah. I mean, again, th- this is, this is for somebody, right? It may not be for me. It may not be for you or it might be for you. Um, but as of right now, it, it just looks like, I, I don't, I don't know who's, who's this more targeted for. You know, like, is it really for the PC gamers? Because would you really buy it? Well, like it's a, not. Yeah, it's not. It's not, exactly. So that's that's what I'm trying to get at. It's it's really not. So then who really is this for besides the, I don't know, like maybe artists that enjoy colorful stuff that like to like, you know, have like the newest gadgets and stuff? I, I, I think know. I think of this and I think of kids. That's what I think of. I think of like a kid is going to be, this is like they're going to be their first desktop that they're using. Or really? Something a like 12, 12, 12.99, their first desktop? I doubt <laughs> okay, that. Okay, maybe maybe like a teenager or something. Like, you know what I mean? Like Even as far- even so, that that's pushing it. I mean, yeah. that 12, 12.99, it, it, it's a steep price. Right? Oh, yeah. 1300 bucks well, for a desktop is Even for, not for us who who have our, our you know, our, 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 our established careers yeah. at this point. This is not like a, a easy thing that I'm gonna. Oh, I can't out. just swallow and just like just exactly. buy it out of whim. Yeah. Um, so last. That, so I, it just brings me, it brings me back to the question: like, who is this really for? That's what I'm trying to get at. Like, is it for a teenager? Is it for a PC gamer? Is it for a child? Like, no, I don't think any of those. So then, who? So yeah. I, I mean, I'm sure. Again, they 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 know that it's targeted for somebody. I just I can't see it. I don't know who it is for. Um, last thing about the IMAX here. Um, it's very strange that they decided to do the colors with the the desktops. Mm-hmm. Why didn't they do the colors with the laptops? I feel like the laptops would have been a True. better yeah. option to go to with like fun colors because those are more mobile. People want to express themselves more, right? Right. Like, who's who's going to see your laptop? Who's going to see your Mac One? Your your Mac One. Your um your, your new Mac when your iMac when you're at home. Like you know, it's just kind of like more for yourself. But it's 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 a it's a weird choice that they made, but. Yeah, I don't know. Well, well, moving on. Um, iMac Pro, or iMac Pro, um, iPad Pro. Uh, basically, the difference with this one is it's using the Apple's M1 chip again. Mm-hmm. Um, again, that M1 chip is going on everything. Basically, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm yeah. not surprised if the next iPhones are going to have the M1 chip. Yep. Right, I agree. It's yeah. just um, the new iPad Pro supports USB C and Thunderbolt. Um, there are two versions, an 11-inch and 12.9-inch. It will start at 799 and it will be able to connect to 5G. So, Kelvin, I'll ask you this. Since you were thinking about purchasing an iPad or, or tablet-type deal, you know, Surface, what do you think of this? Does this entice you to, to maybe make that purchase still towards an iPad? Unlike the IMAX, the iPad Pro or the, or the iPad in general definitely gets me more... I, I, I'm more interested in this for sure. Um, I, I again, like you said, I am interested in some type of um, tablet, iPad, or tablet type of thing. So this looks like I'm gonna be like, all right, I, I kind of want this, <laughs> and, and everything that the, all the bullet points there kind of give me more of an enticing feel to buy to purchase this. Um, Eight hundred bucks is is still kind of steep in a sense for a tablet, really, for yeah. a tablet for sure, right? But um, I like everything that it has. Like the the M1 chip is great. Um, if you have support for USB C, obviously, like you know, we're kind of striving US, yeah. towards that now. So yeah, Thunderbolt, great. 11 inch t- between 11 inch and the 12.9 inch, like you know, that's kind of like depending on how big or small you want your uh, tablet is, you know, depending on the person. But this all kind of like hits all the bullet points for me. So I'm I'm definitely more interested in this. Yeah, I think uh, the thing though, this does get expensive. Right. Exactly. So eight hundred yeah. is for the the base level one, the eleven inch yep, one. Yep. Okay. Excuse me. Um. Wh- when you want the keyboard and you want the thing that go and the the pencil, those right. are each another one hundred fifty to hundred bucks. So well, it now- goes back to that commercial that Intel put uh, put out a couple weeks ago, right, or, or a month ago, where like you start, you kind of start noticing all that um all those little um 
gadgets that you need for for Apple in general, like it, it starts adding up, right? So this is gonna definitely be more than eight hundred bucks if you want to, you know, compile everything that you need, like the keyboard and the pencil and all that stuff. Exactly. So, yeah, sure. so that's that's a hard thing. The stomach is like, yeah, okay, yeah. hundred bucks isn't terrible. It's still mm-hmm. expensive for most people. But now the way you're advertising is like, oh, it has a keyboard and you can use your pencil with it. But it's like, in order for me to get that stuff, I have to spend at least two to three hundred dollars more. Two to three hundred dollars more. Yeah, and that's yeah. where it gets in, in, in crazy. Like that. So this is the thing. Like, if there was a way that Apple can bundle some of these things together, or even include the pen, or I don't know. Again, I'm not a business person. I'm not sure how the, all that works, especially on Apple's turf, but you kind of need to get some type of incentive to like purchase this thing. And if you give, just give something a little bit more, the pen or, or even like a cover for, for the tablet, I feel like it would be, it would go so much more. Yeah. It seems like Apple keeps taking away accessories. It does a hundred percent. Instead of giving them to you, you know, the power block from raising up that price. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. So So it's hard to, it's a hard to stomach for, for an average day, an, an average consumer, but you know, again, Apple has a following and they have people that will purchase every iPhone every year um, with no no thoughts, you know, no second, no second doubt. So this is probably going to be still very profitable for them, I feel like. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, the iPad's always been successful. So yeah, uh, I, this is a good thing. I mean, I, those M1 chips, from what I'm hearing, are amazing, you know. Um, I think people really do like the simplicity too, like new buyers. Cause yeah. when you're buying a computer, it's like, okay, what CPU do you want? Oh, are you going Intel or are you going AMD? And if you don't know what that means, you're like, I, I, I don't know. Apple's right. kind of just being like, it's just the M1 chip. Like it's just our chip. It's just the main chip that goes in every one of our, our devices. So right, right. it definitely is going to eliminate a lot of confusion against with consumers about like what, what their products offer versus like, what processor should I go with? You know, um, my only thing I wish I wish like Apple products would run like Adobe stuff. You know, like I, I just I, they I wish, they do they do. You just have to spend but it, it's, money. It's such it's such a, a hurdle to jump. You know, yeah. Like, I just you wish it, spend they all kind of talked well, and it doesn't. So that's the only thing that I, I would like kind of second guess and. I don't know. It, 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 I was, that's why I was contemplating between a Surface or like a like a like an iPad, because the Surface I know you can definitely like you know it, it'd be more user friendly, obviously, because it uses Windows and it'd yeah. be easier for us to kind of work with. But I don't know. Um, I um, would still probably lean more towards the iPad because it's just it, it has again. It, I feel like it's it's a, the much more powerful tablet, and it would be nice to just have something that powerful in the palm of your hands instead of just kind of being glued to your desktop all the time yeah no for sure um but moving on to the next one is this one's a little you know whatever um apple tv 4k it starts at 179 dollars for 32 gigs 200 for the 64 gigs it will support hdr um it is powered by the a12 bionic chip which is the same is as we have yeah iphone xs mm-hmm. um so you can color balance the Apple TV with your iPhone. So if you want to like cool. fix the color up, which was really, I don't know if you saw the, the conference, but it showed how to do I it. it looked really I, I saw the video of it. Yeah. 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 Um, and then they have a new Siri remote, which to me looks so much better than, than the, the previous version. I hated that thing. I, I don't know if yeah, you saw it, that. It looks, it looks more, they're, they're kind of aiming more towards like how the iPhone looks now with the, like kind of like the edgy um, squares or like the rectangular look of it. Do you know yeah. what it reminds me of? The little like uh, cursor thing. It reminds me of the first. Um, I can't. iPod. You know the the click wheel. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, what it yeah, reminds yeah. me of. Yeah. So. Cool. I mean, I, I I'm actually this was kind of one of more exciting for me than what what it really should be, just because I feel like we're. I, I mean, for me in my house, I don't have any cable. I just have the fire streaming stick. services. Yeah, streaming service. That's it. So um, I have a fire stick in the living room and upstairs in my room. The one upstairs in my room though is the, like the older model. So I'm kind of like ready to get rid of that. So I think this would be a great um, switch. And it just it, again it hits all the good bullet uh, bullet points there. So price point, you know, not not crazy not terrible but at the same time but how long this is going to last you you know what i mean like how long you use this like i can't remember the last time i had to like my parent at my parents house like they have an apple tv and i can't even recall when they 
like when they bought it. Like I feel like it's 100%. been there forever. Yeah. Exactly. So, so it's expensive. It's, it's gonna be. It's expensive, but it's gonna be worth it in the long run, right? Because you're not gonna yeah. have to do anything else for it. Yeah. Um, just update it basically, and then so HDR support, great, cool. The A12 biochip, great. Like you know, like all these things are great, especially you know the color balancing that you can use for your phone. I wish you can kind of use your phone as a remote as well. That would be kind of cool. Um, but again, it, it's I, I'm I'm for it. I, I think I'd get this too. To be honest, like yeah, this is I'm going to be all I'm actually out. thinking about getting it. Um, because yeah. the 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 OS on my TV. It just it sucks like it's slow. It's like yeah. to, to get to the apps and stuff like that. So I'm thinking about just getting an Apple TV and just calling it a day. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, I'm I'm excited for this too. This is this seems pretty cool. And, and it actually it was a, a something that actually needed to happen because they haven't really updated their Apple TV catalog in a, in a, quite some time, right? This is like yeah, the first yeah, one it, in a it's, while. It, it's actually you can't even use like the YouTube app on the older uh, Apple TV because right. for whatever reason. So. Definitely an upgrade. So this was a much, much needed upgrade. So yeah, mm-hmm. I'm all for it. Um, all right. This one, Air Tags. Interesting. So this is the one that people have been wanting for a long time. So Interesting enough, yeah. Right? It's Apple. Apple's take on tiles. Helps you find your devices and accessories like your keys and wallet. Has a precision finding feature that will tell you exactly how far you are from your item. It will also play a sound. Custom engraving will now will also be available. So uh, the AirTag will be available for $29 a pop or $100 for a four-pack. And it's available April 23rd, so in two days. Why would All you right. need a four-pack? For your family. Okay. You know, you got you got two set of keys or something like that. Or Fair enough. I don't, yeah. I don't know why you need a four-pack. But <clears throat> anyhow, this is cool. I, I, yeah, I think it's cool. I mean, I don't know if this is something I would use, but why? I don't know. It's one of those things like, why not? Like, for if, tr- if I got it for a crit, for for a, for a gift, I'll be like, all right, cool. Like, I'll use it. And yeah, yeah, exactly. I won't think to, I, I won't think twice about it though. You know, like I'll have it in the background, and I'll never like think about it until I actually need it. But that's like, how often you're gonna like if you're someone that has like a key hook, and mm-hmm. just like comes into your house and you plop your key your keys on your key hook, you don't need this, right? Because you know where your keys are all the time. But if you're someone, like my mom. Your mom. Who is just like, Rob, where's my keys? Alaris. Where's my keys? And it's like, I don't know where Granted, you're, she's pretty good. Yeah, granted, Alaris is pretty good for keys. But there's things that once in a while she does forget. And she like plops somewhere. So um, this would be good for those like your mom that would lose mm-hmm. things seconds after she placed it somewhere so yeah, exactly this is, this is pretty good and, and, this it, is, and again, it connects to your iphone and it's you exactly. can just click your and it's just easy to find and, it, and you can mm-hmm. literally hone in on where it is exactly yeah. so this is a hundred percent a great device for people that are scattered brain and they, they they lose their stuff all the time yeah so yeah uh, apple's definitely going in more leaning towards their security portion of their the industry or the other or their company so i think this is pretty good this is actually a plus for them so i'm excited for this but again i i wouldn't really i'm excited for those that need it basically because yeah, i exactly I don't yeah, really yeah need for it. sure um how do you think what do you think of the design i think it looks cool i think it's cool it's a simple little button looking thing it's yeah it's like so you just press it and then it just makes a sound or something like that um what well it, it will make the sound when you hit on your iphone like find my device and it's a beacon basically so you can hear it where it is so you can locate it so um cool. pretty cool and you just stick it on anything or you put it on like a little loop and it has them is it like magnetic i don't think it is i don't think it's magnetic it, they come they have put like it in these, the back like, of your phone or something you know like just magnet magnetize it to your phone i guess you could yeah but I mean, your phone already has it. Has like, why would you be looking for your your phone? Like, you need your phone to find that the AirTag. It doesn't work. I don't think it works. So, is the AirTag that is the tag being attached to your keys? It's more for your keys and wallet. Okay. It's not necessarily for your phone. I thought what I'm looking at right now is the 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 button with the with the logo, right? I thought that was like the transmitter or something, and you attach something to your keys so that it can locate that with your phone no it, it's it's literally just like that little button it's it's a little okay. button and you just uh, it looks like a button. i want to say it is a button. it looks it's and you just sure, plop sure, that sure. on your uh your keys you hook it up and then it it's the thing that helps you find hone in your your, your devices or you know 
they also they they've already put in a whole line of like different little little packs for it so you can kind of customize it and like little little mm-hmm. leather like you know circular little loops thing. yeah like loops hold- so yeah i'm sure people are gonna go wild with that so accessorize it and stuff for yeah for but sure. i mean apple again this is another thing that's good for Ac- apple's ecosystem if you're you're into that so um it's finally here last thing and definitely the least <laughs> yes <laughs> uh purple iphone that's it that's they were just like you know what They're like oh shit we forgot purple let's just throw it in there you know what i mean it's it's <clears throat> an iphone 12 but in purple apple wanted a pop of color in their lineup and here it is so this is weird that like midway, like a couple of months after, like, oh, purple, here you go. And you're just like, yeah. okay, okay, sure. Who asked for this? I mean, you know what I mean? Like, who's, who's, who, who wants wanted this? purple? I mean, someone will buy it. I mean, it. There's, there's definitely people that love purple. So this is probably like, oh, yeah, I love this. I'm getting this. But cool. Like, I don't know if this was something that needed to be in their their presentation, but yeah, whatever. It's, yeah, exactly. Okay. So lots of digest there, Kelf, right? Yep. What was your personal thing that they unveiled? Out of this list here, it would have to be probably the iPad Pro or the uh, Apple TV 4K. Yeah. Um, if I had to choose one, I would probably lean more towards the iPad Pro simply because I do need an, a tablet. So this is right up my alley. But the Apple TV is right right there with it. So um I think those two things will be they're going to be purchased in the in the near future for sure. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know when their next event will be. Um, it'll probably be sometime in the fall. Usually, I don't know if they really have a summer event, but uh, as always, Apple always shows some pretty cool stuff. Um, what about yeah. you? What was your what was your favorite? Um, I really liked the the IMAX. I thought they were the M1 IMAX. I think the IMAX really needed a redesign really bad. It it had the same design for for forever. Um, I think so. This is something you would buy though. Like this, like you would. I don't. I wouldn't necessarily purchase it myself. You just you just like it as an announcement. uh, Yeah, I think it's cool. Um, Again, those colors. I don't. I'm not crazy. I'm I'm more of a PC person, a a gaming PC person. Um, But I could see someone purchasing this. You know what I mean? Yeah. Again, with that four and a half. Um, like four and a half, four to ha- four and a half K screen. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that. That's pretty. That's pretty good because you know if you get a monitor that's four K and then you get the PC along with it, that starts adding up too. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Um, we'll see how that does. I mean, yeah. I think it's so fun fact the <laughs> the <clears throat> the iMac is so tiny that it doesn't allow for a phone jack. Like they had, they had to put the phone jack on the side. And it couldn't be like in the front, you know. So they had to put it on the side for the phone jack to actually fit in. Otherwise, it would just like it wouldn't fit straight through. When you say phone jack, you mean like Ethernet port? Ether? No, no, like like a like a, a, a earphone jack. Oh, okay, okay. Well, actually, now we're talking about the Ethernet port. Mm-hmm. So the Ethernet port is not actually in the iMac. It's in the power brick of the iMac. Oh. So oh, okay. it's on like the floor. It's not actually in, which I think is actually pretty cool. That's actually pretty good. Yeah, I kind of like that better. Because why right? do you want an Ethernet port onto your, like your, your actual screen? Your screen, screen. basically. Yeah, yeah. that makes so, sense. I, like I wish that. more devices actually did that more often. Like I wish like yeah. RP, PCs did that, where you could just like plug it into your the, the power if it had a power, or even like consoles be right. nice. You know. So yeah, I thought that was interesting too, though, because like that's how thin this thing is. You yeah, know, you can't put a. a you know, headphone jack. It's just it has to be on the side, which is pretty cool. I want to see it in person, so I will, uh, yeah. we'll see. Um, moving on, yeah, that was a hefty topic, man. Uh, we'll go to yeah. topic two. So the time demos for Resident Evil Village are a terrible PR strategy. This is from Kotaku. Resident Evil Village received a series of de- series of demos. The first of which already happened, mashing several levels together. The others demos consisted of several dates the dates are as followed north america may 1st 5 p.m to may 2nd 5 p.m yep. europe may 2nd to 2 a.m to may 3rd 2 a.m um asia may 2nd 8 a.m to may 3rd 8 a.m um three different demos two which are playstation exclusives and will last 30 minutes and one of which lasts 60 minutes available 
for eight hours at a time, except the last one, which is available until the release of the game. Okay. What okay. did you just okay. say? <laughs> I don't understand any of what that. What is fucking <laughs> Capcom Fumando? Like, what are they actually smoking with this? I don't know, man. This was overly complicated for no reason. And what Kotaku was trying to explain in this article, you, know, you can go check it out. Um, it was more like an opinion piece, but it, it was just a convoluted way of just releasing a demo for the audience that they are trying to show, right? They are trying to like, you know, grab. And it was just very convoluted, very complicated. And it just kind of steered a lot of people away from actually playing the game. One, because you had so many dates and times to follow through with it. it you almost need like a spreadsheet to figure out what time and day I had to play the literally game. the thing right there. Like I had the, the data right in front of me and I'm like, what am I reading? What am I actually reading right now? Right. So I steered away from not playing one because I, I don't think it even matched with the times that I was available. And two, I don't, I, I, I'm not really into the whole, oh, play this game for an hour, play as much as you want for an hour and, you know, see how far I you get that. type of thing. Yeah, I'm, not I'm like, I'd rather just play the game, especially if the game's coming out like within weeks. I'd rather just wait and play the game, you know, in the time that it comes out. So I think the major issue with this is just how whoever is involved in this PR stunt here, they, they did a terrible job of um, actually giving the audience what they want with this because they're, they're you're actually doing the opposite of what you're trying to do, right? You're trying to get people's attention for this game, especially since it's so close to release. Mm -hmm. What you're doing right now is actually moving people away from this because they're like, eh, I don't want to try this out because I don't understand what you're trying to give me right now, right? Yeah. And instead of just releasing a 60-minute demo on the PlayStation Store, on the Xbox Store, like everything, and just kind of release it and say, here you go. The game comes out in two weeks. Enjoy it. So, you know, let us hear your thoughts. Everyone's like, oh, but, you know, I, I work this day. And, oh, so you're, you're kind of getting, like, the short end of the stick if you actually have a normal job. You know, you know it, it's just, it's so not. It, it was one of those things where, like, I actually was on my PS5 over the weekend, and I saw that you could download the Resident Evil demo. And I was like, all right, cool, I'll go in there. And it gave me, like, a timer. It was, like, six days. And I'm like, I'm, I don't, I'm not going to remember in six days to come back and play this demo. Like, yeah. Why did they do this? Why Why did they think that this was a good idea? Yeah, I don't know. Did you I think, think to just... create excitement, be like, all right, guys, we're going to do an Easter hunt for like, like you know I what I think mean? that was the, the their goal. But again, I think they just, they fell hard on that. And I mean, it probably did good. I mean, I heard the demo was great. But yet besides the whole dates issue and time issue, I heard the demo was great as far as like the first one, right? Um, so we'll, we'll see what the others happen but i don't know i i think this was something that they definitely should reconsider especially with their future titles and again what happens to just releasing a demo to all platforms and everyone enjoy it when you can't that's, that's all you need to do just release one demo have people play it have their thoughts and stuff and then be done with it you don't need like a 60 demos like just do one and I get what they're trying to do, right? Like they're trying to build that hype. And for you to build a hype, you need to like kind of cram in as much time or as little time as people can have so that it builds that momentum of like, oh, I have to play this. Like this is this is for exclusive people only. I need to try this out at this time, right? Like I guess that's what they're trying to do. Similar to like Nintendo, right? When they try to do like you can buy Mario uh, what's that Mario All Stars like you know bundle that they had for the Switch, um, but you have to buy at this certain time, otherwise you know you you won't be able to play this game ever again. That's why they had like all those um, you know rest in peace Mario um, memes going out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I I think I guess that's what they were trying to do, but it just didn't really it it, it didn't really verbalize well with the audience in my opinion. It didn't verbalize well with me. Definitely not with you. Um, again, people that have like that work and that have schedules and that have like real time jobs, like this was something that you couldn't really enjoy because they they timed it for some specific people. Yeah, I I honestly wish they didn't do a bunch of demos. I was happy with just the one they they gave out, right? Right. Because it, it gave just, you a simple taste. That's it. That's exactly, and it maybe it wanted it, it. I craved more of it, and it's a scary game. Right? right. This is making it less scary because it's like, oh, I know what to expect now when I'm playing through the game. For sure. That's right? true. That's a good point so, too. Yeah. Um, I, I just think this was a bad call on their end and 
uh, I don't think anyone likes likes this. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. You know, it, there might be some person who's like, "Oh my god, th- this new one's coming out in here," and then we're gonna go play this one. And we're gonna play this one. But it's like, yeah, if nobody... you're a hardcore Resident Evil fan, then this is probably right up your alley. But I mean, I I'm, I would consider myself a Resident Evil fan. I, I I don't play all of them religiously, but this just didn't hit. You know, I don't mm-hmm. think this did anything for us, especially. So I don't know. It, it was just kind of a. I, I just hope that in the future the the PR people would reconsider doing this and again just release a demo for the audience one, and that's just it. One. That's one and one you're good done. one. That's all we need. Let that's that it. settle, you know. Let that kind of like do what it needs to do. And that's it. Yeah. Um. I do wish more people, more developers did demos more. Like just release like one demo to to try the game out. Um, back in the I, day, we did with the PS3 yeah, era. Ba- you know, back like, in the day, they had like a little CD you can try it and stuff. I, I want that okay. to come back, especially with the new digital age where you can't go to conventions as much anymore actually try the game I, they should just release it on the the consoles i think the reason why they're scared to do that is because people are afraid to go uh into the data and and do some digging and stuff like that to see yeah. what's that i think that's the main reason why they don't do that but understandable yeah um but yeah uh we're gonna move on to the next topic Kelf. topic three ps3 and vita store is alive again as sony reverses closure upon backlash this is also from Kotaku. On Monday, Sony announced they will no longer shut down the PlayStation Store for PS3 and PS Vita users. This is a quote from, uh, from President and CEO Jim Ryans. Recently, we notified players that PlayStation Store for PS3 and PS Vita devices was planned to end this summer. Upon further reflection, however, it's clear that we made the wrong decision here. So today, I'm happy to say that we will be keeping the PlayStation Store operational for ps3 and ps vita devices psp commerce functionality will retire on july 2nd 2021 as planned so this is cool this is like power to the people yeah right like there was something else i was reading today where the cus people were complaining about something and the company reversed it they were like all right we're not gonna do it anymore people need to speak up exactly people need to speak up because if they don't speak up Companies are going to get a way of doing bullshit. Yep. And this is the perfect example of what your voice can do. Um, as long as it's respectful, right? As long as it's not bashing anybody. Exactly. If you just tell your story and tell, like, if you just kind of give them what you what they want to hear, more than likely, if everyone kind of, like, works together on this, it would it would, it would would go in your favor, right? I think this was smart on Sony's, on Sony's end to admit defeat right they were like yeah we messed up this was a, a poor decision on our end and we're going to revert what we you know what we decided to do so playstation store for playstation 3 and vita are going to be back and operational that's fantastic you know like that's something that a lot of uh, a lot of companies should kind of do as well you know listen to the audience and see what that gets you i mean think about if you're if you're not super well off right think of that think of it you don't have a lot of money Right, you don't have access to like the newer consoles and stuff like that. Even a PS4, right? You you're rocking a PS3, and you and your buddies have been playing playing this PS3 online. And Sony's just like, all right, we're pulling the plug on it. Sorry, you can't play with your friends anymore. You have to you have to buy the newer consoles in order to play. Right. You know that that's for for that person. You know what I mean? Like that that's dope. That like those people because for me it's like it doesn't it doesn't affect me personally because i'm like i doesn't affect me either we don't we don't play any of those things anymore right exactly Um, we're kind of like in the new generation era but for those there's still you know are still quite a few people that still have a ps3 and they're content with it you know they're playing still newer games for them you know they think that these are like newer games for them they play again not everyone is fortunate enough to have like the newest and you know best gadgets right now so a ps3 is something that some people do have and they're content with and if you're telling them that you're going to be closing down the store what do they have left you know besides some of the games that they already have um you know hard disk wise so this is great i think they did a great job and and i like how how quick it was you know they they heard the the reaction from everybody and they were quick to like flip everything over so it was it was a good business decision on on their end yeah, I think so. So, um, like I said, this is like, again, I said it's a good example of speaking up, speaking up when something is just not sitting right. And this this kind of stuff will happen, right? Companies will change their tune because if they want your your business, 
they will listen to their customers. Respectfully, of course. Yeah, exactly. If you're over there saying like, "Fuck you, you Sony," this yeah, is this you is you're you're bullshit. going to hell for this one. Fuck like, you. Yeah, like yeah, nah, that's not, it, the, way that's not the way you go about doing stuff. Be constructive with it, you know, and be right. like, "Hey guys, like I really like this," and blah blah blah. I had a lot of fun memories of my friends playing this stuff, and you're just gonna pull the plug like that sucks. Then they're gonna be like, mm-hmm. "Fuck, we don't want to do that," you know. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah. Any any last thoughts about that one, Gelf? Um, well. This the, to me, this makes it seem like Sony's trying to kind of be uh, in in the eyes of the people, like the good guys, right? So, you, do you think this has anything to do with like all the positive vibes that Microsoft is getting right now? Like, do you think that was like? Imagine if Microsoft was not kind of in the picture at all. Um, right? I think would, so would, too. Would yeah, a little bit. This? Yeah, I think I think the fact that Xbox is it's catching up to uh we're gonna talk about this in a second but catching up yeah. to sony um they have to kind of be in good behavior because yeah, if they do something exactly. wrong then it's like then we're good xbox yeah. yeah which leads us to our next topic ps5 is now the fastest selling console in u.s history this is from psu.com this month's NPD results are in, and they reveal that PS5 has become the fastest-selling console in U.S., both in dollars and units, sold. PS5 is already selling faster than the PS4 five months ago, and in during the supply restraint and much higher supply demands. Wow. I think um, I think that meant the PS5 is selling faster than the PS4 was at the same time frame five yeah. months in. So yeah. yeah, so which is nutty. Obviously, we could tell because you can't get one right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that that's crazy, right? Because one, the the demand is high. You can't really get one right now, and COVID is still, mm-hmm. you know, happening. And the fact that also some people probably don't take this in consideration, um, scalpers too. The, I think the scalp scalping situation has been it's gotten huge worse this, this year mm-hmm. specifically every right? facet or, of, you know, of every every crevice of every hobby everything is just exactly so the, so 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 ps5 had a lot kind of like you know stopping it but here we are it's still the fastest selling console in u.s history which is insane good on them that that just t- tells you that sony's um pedigree is 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 well known right Mm-hmm. They they are well known for their exclusives, and you are buying a PS5 for this specific reason. And if you don't have a PS5, you're missing out on X, Y, and Z. So people want that. You, know? you got to remember too, um, marketing plays a good big role in this. Back mm-hmm. in, back in November, who was the one that was marketing on every everything about yeah. Sony? It was Sony, Sony, Sony. You saw it on every PS5 everywhere. Like that was like. Yep. the console to get like even like in influence and stuff like they would show the series x yeah it's a Not new so console much. but they didn't really market it that well right again it, it just goes down to where sony is at right now and what the ps4 did w- for sony um sony ha- doesn't have to play catch up right they they are in the spot that they're in and all they're doing right now is keeping it meanwhile microsoft is trying to play catch up right they're trying to be on everyone's good side they're trying to do all the right things which they are they're doing a really good job which they are we're doing a fantastic job but it's just taking them a lot more a lot longer to get to where sony is right now meanwhile sony is like yeah we're we're the big dogs right now and you know like this just screams like you know we, we're, we're doing big things like this is what yeah, we yeah, yeah. like we're this is sony this is playstation like you know our brand and our brand screams volume Question for you. Do you think this has something to do with the console design? Because if you look at it, the PS5 is a sexier looking console than the Xbox Series X. Like compared to the bo- the Xbox is literally just a box. A box. It's I it's hard, it's honestly easy to miss. I was over at someone's house the other day and I saw it yeah. and I was just like, oh, it just looks like a box. Yeah. But you got it right Meanwhile, behind you and that stands out like a towering behemoth. Yeah. Do you do you that, have some, I mm-hmm. I never thought of that. That's a good question. I think it might not not that you say, I think it does. If you're thinking in like layman's terms, right? Like little Johnny goes with his mom, they see two consoles in front of him, they're like 
yeah they're kind of both for the same price but this one looks pretty cool this looks like a futuristic like alien ship meanwhile this looks like a black box right like there's really nothing flashy about it you know some people may go towards the flashier you know behemoth of a alien box right yeah. like it's it just it's kind of like natural uh, like a natural thing for humans to just kind of gravitate towards gravitate something towards that's white looks, yeah. shiny and you know i think white stands out more right white looks more futuristic um so it it, it might it might do, I don't know if it kind of like really gave them a huge bump in sales because of the, the you know, a lot of people like us, for example, I feel like a, the box is just a box. Like exactly. At least I prior to PS5 and yeah, prior to PS5 and Xbox Series X, I didn't really care much of like how the console looked. I just cared about what it did. Well, um, well this is the first time in a while that the consoles have looked radically different from each other. Exactly. Right? Like PS, yeah. PS3, PS4, or they kind of look yep. just look like boxes, right? Right. Whereas think of like N64. You look at N64 and you look at PS1, mm-hmm. like N- the N64 looked fun. It yeah, had the cartridge you slap in, yep, you had the yep. fun controller, whereas yep. PS1 just kind of looked like this gray looking weird box thing. You know? sure. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and again, I think this this tells you what Microsoft and Sony like. I feel like this generation more so than any other. They 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 know what their audience is. Sony, if you like, and even the the the, the way the consoles are made, right? Like the design of these consoles, they're they're to, they're specifically towards a certain audience. I feel like, right? If you look at the Xbox, like they. They they ha- they gravitate more towards just like a more simplified version of a, a simplified like you know uh, target right. Yeah. If you look for uh, on a PlayStation side, I feel like it's it's gravitating more towards the audience that likes luxury. It's like a luxury console. If you so think of it that way. Do you do you would would you say that Sony is like the PlayStation's almost like the Apple of like consoles in that sense. Like as far as like the luxury thing and like this is. If like, you want to think of it that way, yeah, I guess yeah. so because they they, if you think of Apple, you know what you're getting in an Apple product, right? Like you you have that idea in the back of your mind. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I'm buying, I'm buying an, a phone. I know it's going to work 100. percent I know I'm going to get this, this, and that. With PlayStation, you know, Same. you know, you're going to get your those, X, those Y, and awesome Z titles. Games. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I can see that for sure. Uh, but the, it's just it's just interesting how these two consoles have their own different designs, and I feel like they they gravitate towards two different audiences. And Sony and Microsoft knew exactly who they were tar- trying to target. Yeah, for sure. Well, um, speaking of Microsoft, we're going to move on to our last topic. We're going to wrap up here. Uh, Microsoft is no longer in talks of buying Discord. Last month, Bloomberg reported that Microsoft was um, in exclusive talks to acquire Discord. Today, uh, published by the Wall Street Journal, those talks are off. Uh, Microsoft was going to purchase Discord north of ten billion. Um, yeah, that's basically what there is. They just say we're gonna. They were talking a big game, like we're gonna buy it, and it just never, never happened. Is this a bad thing? No. Is it a good thing? No. I don't know. You know, it's just. I mean, it's it's not a bad or good thing. I think it just kind of it, business, businesses happen all the time, like these is huge business decisions and some of them kind of go into flourishing some of them don't this one happened not to um it's not the end of the world i mean microsoft still has their own kind of you know like uh f- software that they can use to, to chat so with people that, right that's like what i'm still thinking a, a they're chatting gonna feature that they have do i think what they're gonna do is they're gonna make their own kind of discord they have the means to do it they have their means to make something that's like discord in within their their ecosystem yeah i think that's a big possibility right because the the party system is just outdated now um yeah. even on the playstation it's just outdated like people want discord people it's just such an easy thing to use it's a bunch of it's messaging and and channels and voice channels like it's just a premier way to, to communicate with people online for sure yeah you know who knows i mean i don't I, I don't think i don't think they're honestly making anything of that nature i don't think that's in their like top priority right now mm-hmm. you know um maybe down the line sure but if they didn't if they if they were going to purchase discord to me that tells me they don't have anything else to show for it right like it's they they, they lost the 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 talks to buying discord so i don't think they have anything behind the scenes of, do you like, think it was discord making... or do you think it was microsoft and there was like they called it off 
I don't know. This girl was getting a good ten bill. Like that. That that's. I'm just saying. That if, I, if I was the owners, I'd be like, Yeah, I'm, I'm like, good. I can. You know what I mean? So. I don't know. I, I don't know. Again, I, it's I like wish, one of it's one of those things that you wish you were like a fly on the wall. Yeah, and just kind of like hear listen, what's going on. Like what's going on? Yeah. Fucking. But I don't know. What do you think? Uh, you think so? Do you think this is? Do you think this is uh, a negative? Like it's not negative per se, but do you think this is something that Microsoft kind of lost? They they had a good opportunity and they lost it. No, I think it's fine. I think they're going to be okay. Like I said, they'll they'll come out with something. I think that's similar. That's what I think. But yeah. um, again, that party system is super outdated. So they're they're going to have to do something eventually, right? Mm-hmm. Like we try and use that party that party system online. It sucks. Yeah. So yeah, anyhow, it's terrible. That that's a big thing that I don't like about console gaming. It, for me, is being able not being able to use Discord. To be fair, at least for PS5, I can only speak with the PS5 one, but it's not bad. It's not terrible, but it, it I, I wish it was just, yeah, it was just the two. But anyhow, yeah. um, that's it for the show, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Kelv, did you have a good time? Yeah, this was a good, uh, it was good, a good episode, topics. right? I liked it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, we post the uh, video to our shows every Friday at 12 p.m. along it's uh, Along with the... Uh, on Spotify, Apple. Oh. Yeah, well, Game of the Week is on Thursday, Wednesdays. We post Wednesdays, Game of the Week. Yes. Yeah, yes. but uh, we're on all major streaming services. Mm-hmm. Um, give us a follow. Give us a, a like. Subscribe. Um, any closing remarks, Kelf? The Vita lives one, <laughs> <laughs> and no, this was a great uh, pod. This was a great episode, and um, we'll see what what next week is. You know what's cooking up next week. Yeah, uh, and again, closing remarks here is if you guys, if there's anything we could do different, you guys want to see us talk about something different or let us know. Send us a DM. Send us a comment. We'll do it up. Yeah, yeah. Um, again, Game of the Week is up, so you guys can check that out. Do you want to reveal some of the stuff that we're working on or not Not, not right now? Uh, I mean, if someone's listening to this right now towards the end, why not? You know, we, right. got, we got some cool videos uh, coming little, out. A little, a little like, you know little easter egg in there you made it this you made it this far right <laughs> yeah um, um yeah so go ahead what, what are you what are you posting tomorrow uh tomorrow i'm going to be posting a, another pokemon pack uh another opening of pokemon cards so that one's fun um i'll pro- i'll keep doing them as i keep getting more product I, like i said it's not gonna be like a set thing it's just whatever i get a decent amount of stuff i'll open it right on yeah. camera um and then we're going to be coming out with a video uh, with Mother's Day. That's all I'm going to say. It's just like a Mother's Day I'm super Day excited about that. Yep, yep. You're also going to be doing one for Father's for Day. For Father's Day. Yep, yep. Yep. Um, that's pretty much it, man. Um, good episode. Yeah, yeah. It was great. Um, one more thing I do want to say. Um, this isn't anything like crazy or anything, but we, we do have uh, Merc. Merc's for, for us, right? This is just kind of like starting off. So we, we have some hoodies coming out. Um, so check those out. We'll be obviously having them on at some point hopefully next week next next week's next episode week, yeah. right and exactly. yeah some people already received some of the the mercs there so um shout outs to them and hope you guys like it yeah so uh keep tuned uh stay tuned for that uh there's gonna be some free merchandise being uh, given out and uh kelf as always awesome time yeah man you too thanks all right peace out see ya <laughs>